Hi, this is Denise from Four Square Marker Farm, and this breed study is on the Devon sheep. Now, I got this sample. It's a part of the stash I acquired from Knit Fairy, and this is a one ounce um, sample of top. So this is going to be a little different because usually. I show you the raw, wash it up, show you how I process it. But this is top, so it's just going to be a spin and a little um, spill about the Devon sheep. And I think after I spin it, because it's just an ounce and it's just top, I'll probably go ahead and dye it and talk about how it dyes up. Okay, now the Devon breed is a British breed, I believe. And um, they're medium-sized white-faced sheep without horns, very good bone, very stout. And the history, it says, is that the breed arose around the 1800s and they were crossed between the Exmoor horn sheep with Devon long wolves. And they have a fleece that's about six kilograms and no I didn't translate that into pounds but I'll figure it out and the micron counts about 48 to 53 so this is a medium wool or it could be considered a little coarse maybe and uh, it's very dense medium length with a very uh, strong staple so let's go ahead and open the package of course, being a cross with a long wool, I really do expect the um, micron count to be high like that. Though I find that I don't have any problem with Lester long wool against my skin um, or uh, thin as a long wool. So, you know, everything does not have to be merino soft. So I have to say right off the bat, sorry for the paper because uh, this particular paper was pressed against the Gulf Coast native. Uh, raw and I it didn't occur to me that it would leave the oil all over the rest of the pages So I think the next time I do a raw sample I might put this in a little baggie So the oil doesn't press all over the other papers, but I mean it's a book full of wool. So, you know, whatever Okay, so here we go Get this really close so you can see it and the, the thing about like I said thing about the top is you don't get to really see um, all the crimp and the features of the wool before it's processed. And uh, if you watch any of my other videos, you know how I feel about commercially processed fibers. Let me just stop right there. So I kind of feel like it could have a little more life. But also, knowing that it is a breed that's developed from a long wool cross, um, I'd, I'd, have to, I'd have to see, you know, like a raw sample, but this may just be exactly what it is. And it looks a lot like a long wood. It has that, that look about it. Not a great deal of crimp to it. It's uh, very smooth and it, it kind of shimmers like it belongs in, in the lo long wool family. So, uh, uh, what I'll do is I'll try to get some Devon raw and see if it's pretty much got that same feature but it, it looks like a long wool to me okay so i'm expecting some things from it based on that cross i am expecting it to spin very smoothly i'm going to be careful with it so that i don't turn it into wire not not a lot of twist for the long wool type fibers uh, with the exception of thin but thin is different uh, and I'm expecting it to die with that same kind of um, jewel tone like like a long wool does. I think I'm going to like this. I'm going to spin this really thin. And uh, I may or may not ply it. I don't know. We'll see. But I could see this making a really nice lightweight uh, shawl or scarf. Uh, even as a single, that would be really nice. Okay, so I'm going to pull off my little sample and put it here. And I just, you know, maybe a little bit more, just tape that to the book. Now, 
there are some colored, just a little bit of color pieces. And I don't know if you can see that. And I don't know uh, if that is something, an issue with the mail. You know, sometimes something left on the card. I don't know how that works. Or if there are just these, can you see that? Yes, just these kind of random colored pieces. Is that considered a issue uh, in the wool? You know, some the oddly stray dark hairs or anything like that. I don't know, but that's cool. It's going to add a little bit of character to the spin. This spin is on the Country Craftsman, and uh, looking at the staple length, I realized that I have to go ahead and draft pretty quick. The Country Craftsman is really fast on the uptake. Um, it's a Saxony style uh, double drive wheel. If you're not familiar with the Saxony style wheels and the Country Craftsman in specific. And this will be interesting because this is the first time I've actually used this wheel to spin anything. I think I've had it maybe for um, uh, maybe a year now. And uh, it's got a pretty small bobbin. And so it's not really the wheel I use as far as production wheels. Now, I of course, I know that I can get more bobbins made and that there are bobbins out there somewhere. But in my case, um, I don't really have the budget to get bobbins made. And since I have other wheels with enormous bobbins, uh, it, for me, it doesn't really make any sense for me to uh, get more bobbins for this wheel. Uh, because when you get the, well, you get more bobbins, you get bigger bobbins, but you also have to change the flyer too. So uh, it, it would be a wheel that I would use more for casual spinning and not really for the high production spinning that I generally do. This would probably be a really good wheel for me to spin the Angora on. I don't generally spin Angora in really large quantities um, like I do the other uh, fibers. And also, too, um, since Angora needs such a high twist and this guy pretty much is flying, it would probably be a good fiber for it. Okay, so I'm looking at staple length. It's probably about four inches, three or four inches, which is nice. And, of course, I'm smoothing and pinching it like I do most of my wools. This being comb top, uh, not something really that I would... Uh, long draw. Not that I do much of that anyway. And uh, trying not to make it broke. And it does feel a lot to me like Lester Long will. It's got that same feel to it. Well, maybe like mohair too. So, time to change. And it'll be interesting to see. I think I get that whole ounce on this bobbin. The Country Craftsman is a noisy little beast. I could get her some oil, tighten it up. Very nice and high speed. This is going to have a really nice halo. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and spin that up. And then I'll have a look at it. I might fly it. Now, my understanding is that Devon wool is the kind of wool that you use for uh, outerwear, outer garments, 
uh, making things like suit jackets, skirts, stuff like that. Um, and you know, I don't even know what I'm going to do with this. I guess I will see what happens after I finish it. Because at the moment it is really thin. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe I'll apply it. And then figure it out. I kind of like to have plans for things ahead of time when I spin. But of course the breed studies aren't really like that. Because I'm just getting to know the fiber. You know, there's, it's one thing reading about what it says to do with it. It's another thing after you spin it to decide because uh, it can say one thing in a book. And after you've spun it, the way you spin it kind of changes things. So you have to feel what you've got in your hand uh, when you spin it, how you've spun it, what that's done to the fiber, and then decide what it is that you want when you're starting out. Now, after I've done the fiber several times, uh, then I know offhand if I want something in particular, I can use this fiber and then have an idea of how to spin it to make it useful for what it is I need. I've been thinking in my head the whole entire time, what am I going to do with this guy? And if it does work up really too coarse, for something useful like, uh, for example, Lincoln Long Wool. I have not found any way to do Lincoln Long Wool where it's something that I feel that I can actually make use of. As far as like wearing or gotland, just it's always too coarse. Mohair, mohair just kind of makes me itch. Uh, even like over top of layers of something. So I use the gotland to make a bag. But I can always uh, make something from this and line it like a cow and line it with fleece. That's always a thought. short forward draw and I'm making some pretty good progress here that's looking good I'm reaching the end of my spin and the country craftsman is a noisy awful clacky beast uh, I guess it would make good for those with those the ASMR videos um, but I find this type of repetitive noise irritating uh, raindrops falling on tin roofs and the sound of scratching I find that very irritating too but I'm one of those people like if I can hear the fish tank and drops of water or the fan and I have to get them turn the fan off because the sound of it kind of irritates me so I guess I'm I'm on the opposite spectrum of that, and there's probably a name for that too. So here we go. And you know, I can't remember if the other Saxony wheel was this clackety. Maybe it's just a Saxony wheel thing. But we're getting to the end here. Mm, I did something wrong. Nope, we're good. So here I am at the end. Oops, kind of broke that there. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. Oh, well, it was looking pretty good.
that last bit was not happy with me. And I think it turned out really nicely. I want to say that uh, as I was spinning, it was more like spinning Lincoln long wool. Okay, here's a good sample. And uh, it was more like spinning Lincoln than it was like spinning Lester. Um, when I spin Lincoln, Lincoln is kind of grabby as a long wool. It's a little coarse for me. I don't really enjoy it as much. Uh, and I don't like it after it's spun. It's just too scratchy for me. Um, which is saying a lot because I'm not super sensitive. I like the down breeds and the hill breeds. So it's not like I'm a super sensitive uh, person when it comes to wool. But the Lincoln, I don't really like. Or the Gotland. So, but the Lester Long wool, I do. And there's something about the Lester that is, it's silky. So it's a whole different ball game going on with the Lester. I like that. Um, as opposed to the Lincoln which is coarse but it is um it's not a smooth you know kind of long wool so i'm thinking this is going to be about the same so i'm looking at it and i am going to go ahead and ply it and i think i have a project in mind so i'll let you know this is the resulting skein and as i was spinning it occurred to me that maybe this is actually devon long wool um, I'm not really certain. The text said Devon, so I can definitely be assured that it's Devon. Whether it's the long wool or the cross um, of the Devon long wool. Uh, I think it was, what is it, Devon close coat is what the other one is. Not sure, but uh, this turned out pretty nicely. Uh, like I said, it did spin up a lot like Lincoln. And so I had to decide what I'm going to do with it. I consulted my friends in the Living History Facebook group because it was a small sample and I didn't want to make something uh, historical from it and so suggested that I could make a pair of mitts, which is absolutely true. For I got about 100 yards and it would make a, a pair of mitts, uh, except that because it's kind of scratchy, um, I don't really know if I can tolerate a pair of mitts. Like I said, I can't wear mohair and Lincoln Long will wool just feels itchy to me so I'm not really sure if I'd be able to tolerate a pair of mitts from this if it was lesser long wool I most certainly could so the next option I was thinking uh was to make some type of doily or um I'm not even sure what to call it just a little thing you throw over top of a table or something like that I don't even use those in real life much less uh historically uh, so I was suggested that I could make a kettle um, holder, which I, which would be pretty neat too. So I'm going to think about that. I might do the kettle holder. That would be just about right for the type of wool this is and for the yardage I have. The Devon Sample is complete I used this hundred yards for the historical pattern it's called a tidy and if you would like to know more about this pattern there's a link to the historical knitting video that will take you to the pattern um, and give you more information on it um, I had to very aggressively block this and I'm not really much for blocking but in this case um, it was inevitable and so I've got my quilting board here and all my pens and wet it and stretch it out and let it dry and I think I did a pretty good job I still might steam the end a little straight but basically it was a pretty good sample I like to make my samples as useful as possible um, when I can, it's just a thing I like to do. And they lend themselves well to um, small projects and quick knits. Okay, so anyway, uh, that's the Devon Breed Study. 
Thank you for following along with me. I hope this kind of sparks your interest in the Devon breed and gives you an idea of some of its uses. Thanks to my subscribers for watching. And if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe and click the notification buttons so that you can get information um, anytime that I post, whatever random time it is. And you can also join me on Facebook through several of the Facebook groups that are listed down below or on Instagram. Thank you very much. Have a great day.